disturbing. <laughs> Ellen, what the hell is this? Why am I here? Why am I wearing this cool jacket and this trendy scarf? Which is so soft. Luke, I'm a high space adventurer now, and uh, welcome to my smuggler's den. Would you care to play? Ellen, we're supposed to be doing show of the weekend in like five minutes, and there's a whole lot of E3 prep that he's doing as well. We really need you to focus up. Please come back and help us film. Oh, so you want me to stop my space adventuring and get back onto the verbal sofa? Well, you know, I'm up for that, but you'll just have to play me for it. What game is this even supposed to be? Is, it, is this a Dungeons and Dragons dice? Chewy, he's on to us. Start the engines. Yeah, Andy, yeah, it's worse than we thought. Yeah, she's gone full solo. Yeah, we're gonna need you to stand in again if that's all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pick her up in time for E3. She'll, she'll tire herself out, I think. Yeah, okay, see you soon. Show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend. So Andy, guess what I've been playing? Uh, um, you don't uh, actually have no, to guess. Yes, yes. I've been playing <laughs> Jurassic. Oh, Sabak. No, no, not Sabak. Oh yeah, no, yeah, Sabak. But Sabak. now I'm Sabak from that. And oh. uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Did you have lunch at Sabaro afterwards? Yes. Okay. And I've been playing <laughs> Jurassic World Alive. Good. Jurassic World Alive is the... Sorry, Jurassic World Alive. It's called, yes, it's called Jurassic World Alive. It's Pokemon Go, but Jurassic Park stuff. See. And it is part of the uh, bad and shameful process that is me getting excited for Jurassic World Falling Oh, you're not, are you? Well, of course I am. Don't remember what happened last time. It was bad. Chris Pratt. This will be bad. In it. But if you're into dinosaurs, you have to take what you can get. <laughs> That's not... <laughs> I saw the trailer, there's a dinosaur in some guy's house. And it's all like... <laughs> I know. It looks really it's bad. It gets in a cupboard. It's it looks, all in the linen. It looks really bad. Okay. It looks really bad and I don't think it's going to be good and I don't think I'm going to like it, but I'm excited to see it. Uh, and, I, <laughs> and increasingly I can't wait. I have conflicting and confused emotions about it. Okay. And part of that is playing Jurassic World Live. It's Pokemon Go, but mm -hmm. with the Jurassic World dinosaurs in Okay. It. So you're walking down the street. Oh yeah. You look at your phone. Cool as you like. On I mean, the corner, because cool, you're playing Jurassic World Alive. But. Sure. On the corner, by the fish and chip shop, mm. you spot a Dionychus. Yep. What happens now? <laughs> okay, so what happens next is a little bit different to Pokemon Go. In Pokemon Go, uh, you trigger an encounter with a Pokemon, and you'll recall Andy from that glorious summer we spent oh, playing Pokemon Go. Summer. That you you fling the Pokeballs and you either catch it or you don't. Yep. In this, is a little bit different. You send in a drone that hovers above the dinosaur, <laughs> and machine guns it to death, <laughs> and then you wear it. And then Jimmy Buffett runs in with a large jug of margarita. <laughs> And you no, will enjoy it. No. Okay. Yeah, a drone goes in and you shoot, you shoot the dinosaur repeatedly with <laughs> darts that extract its genes. And so the mechanic is a little bit different. <laughs> this is actually one of the things that I <laughs> This is actually one of the things that I quite like about it. Right. So you don't catch the dinosaur, you just harvest, just harvest its materials. <laughs> <laughs> and the more you They got your letters. <laughs> they did, yeah. And when you harvest enough, you can go back to the lab and make your own one oh. using, using the miracle of cloning. Mm, I hope you wore gloves. When you find a rare one, you have to get more DNA before you can <laughs> create it. But if you find a relatively common one, you can, you can sort of get enough DNA within one encounter normally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. you're you're not capturing the dinosaurs that you find. You're recreating no. them in a lab. So what yes. happens to the ones you you just they sort sell of to a pet food company? No, they just sort of like stay there. They they run away scared while you fire darts into them from above, which feels a little bit mean. It doesn't feel quite in the spirit. But then sure. Jurassic World is not in the spirit of Jurassic Park. So I'm just trying to embrace the anarchy and inherent animal <laughs> cruelty in the Jurassic World franchise. Sure. Uh, yeah, by drone darting a bunch of dinosaurs until I get enough of their sweet materials to uh, <laughs> to make my own one.
I do quite like the mechanic though. You sort of you drag your finger around and it's there's an element of timing. It's got a sort of space invaders kind of shoot your dart at where the dinosaur's going to be, not oh, at where okay. it is kind nice, of thing. Nice. So it's not unsatisfying to actually dart those dinos. <clears throat> okay, but but tell me about the microtransactions. Oh man, okay, so the micro the microtransactions are heavy. They were there in Pokemon Go, you could spend real money to get an advantage in the game. You spent real money. Well, I don't think I did actually. On, you spent money spent, on incubators, Luke, you I know you did. Must have spent a little. I probably spent yeah, a little. You spent money on incubators. I probably spent quite a lot on spent incubators. All your money on incubators. Uh, this game is a lot more hungry for your cash. Uh, there are a lot <laughs> more. in that tone of voice. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot more sort of pop ups, a lot more like limited offer uh, kind of things. Um, it's quite hard to get incubators. Uh, without a little bit of startup, do re mi, see, yeah, seed capital, a little bit of dough, a little bit of cheddar. Um, so that is definitely a point against it. And finally, on the bad side, um, it, the only other bad point <laughs> to this good dinosaur game. It's not good, okay. but it's not bad either. Okay. The, the the other thing that's bad about it is that you don't evolve things in the same way as you do with Pokemon Go. Instead, when you've got Two dinosaurs. I haven't actually got enough dinosaurs to do this right. yet, but it looks like in the future you when got I have two dinosaurs, I've got loads of dinosaurs, but I haven't got them two that are strong enough. And then uh. you sort of like mush them together into a hybrid, and that's how evolution seems to work. Okay, but that's not how evolution works in the real world. Everyone knows the dinosaurs evolved into humans. Well, first into monkeys, yeah, and, and then, then into, into humans. humans, yeah, and then into floating humans with big heads. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. not happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. It's on the way. It's definitely coming soon. Yeah. That is all sorts of stupid and annoys me as well in that kind of nerdy way that I'm annoyed about anything that, about dinosaurs that's inaccurate. Sure. So that's the bad stuff. Do the dinosaurs have feathers? Well, we'll come to that. Okay. So that's the bad stuff, and there's a lot of bad stuff. Um, also, like the footage you're seeing now, it's all my own footage. Um, through my phone though, I can't capture uh, audio, so I figured I'd maybe just put the music to Magic Up Jump under it. So. <laughs> okay. Jurassic World Alive, it does have its own music, some of it's all right, but I really feel that more tonally appropriate to have the Magic Up Jump theme because it's more that kind of yeah, game. and it reminds you of the fun side of dinos when yeah, they're exactly. not menacing Chris Pratt in a mansion. Yeah, okay. So that's the stuff that's... Oh yeah, oh there's one more thing that's bad about it. Uh, Chris Pratt is all over it. Oh like, wow. His, yeah, his character, his face keeps popping up and he's always doing that thing as if he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's the thing where he's like trying to calm down a velociraptor from the movie. Ha yeah. huh? However, it just looks like you've like you're having an argument with him and he's about to accuse you of raising your voice even though he's the one who's definitely yelling. You know, right. he's like, whoa, yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa. hey, man, hey. hey. How about you simmer down? Let's, yeah, yeah, let's cool it. Simmer down. And I'm like, I, I didn't know we were having an argument. And he'd be yeah. like, whoa, 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 hey man, I don't want to fight yeah. with you, okay? So it's just annoying. Well, also, we're getting aggressive over here. Whoa, 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 cool it, cool it, okay? Okay, man, hey, all hey. our friends are here. Oh. Not in front of everyone, all right? Not in front of it, and I'm like, I honestly. We're not going what, through this again. What are we even talking about? I just want, you know what? I just even start. I just, I, I wanted dessert. The other, the other thing that's quite good is when you're travelling too fast and you have to tell the game that you're not playing it and driving and that you're a passenger. Uh, it's Chris Pratt again, being like, "You're going too fast, there, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> like, like, all right, Chris Pratt. He's like, "Buddy, I'm going to need you to slow down." Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, okay. So okay. that's your. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, All right, Chris Pratt. We soothed. It's like okay. That's your third margarita. I think you need to slow down. I'm like, I feel, like, I feel fine. I feel fine. I'm just having a good time. Whoa, 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 whoa! I worked really hard, Chris. It's my one night out this week. I just wanted to have a drink. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey. Anyway, so that's annoying. Um, but there is some stuff that's good about it. Uh, the main thing is it's got a battle system that is everything that Pokemon Go's battle system should have been. Oh, you mean so, not just going like that? Yeah, do you remember going like that and it w there was a lot of lag and it wasn't very good and then you'd yeah. kind of swipe left and right to dodge an attack but it was never a good idea because you never managed to dodge it and yeah, it was just rubbish. Yeah, the timing was bad, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Pokemon Go's 
like massive loss there is Jurassic World Alive's easy gain because they've basically put in a very simple Pokemon battling system right. and it's quite good. So you choose, um, you, you have like a team of, of dinosaurs that you send in, you can swap them out just like in Pokemon. Uh, they have standard attacks and they have special attacks that have like cooldowns over a number of turns and you win when you've taken down three of the other person's dinosaurs and you don't have to take them down in order so you can do some tactical swapping in and out. It's pretty primitive. It's not especially, especially <laughs> primitive. primitive yeah. yeah, it's not especially sophisticated, but it is quite good. And crucially, it's something that you can do in the game when you're not physically moving around the streets. Uh, okay. So it has a lot. It has more that you can do from home than Pokemon Go. It doesn't have as much charm as Pokemon Go, not by a mile, um, but. It does yeah. have dinosaurs. It does have dinosaurs, and it has battles, and it has yeah more stuff that you can do online. Also, I kind of feel like the designers, the makers of the game were trying dinosaur accuracy wise. There are loads and loads of species in it, which is really cool. Some uh, some exciting species that I haven't thought about since I was a kid. There's a little bit of information, a little bit of like dino facts oh, on nice. each one. Okay. And, That's good. Yeah, and I was like, can you trust these? Lots of them are feathered or covered in proto feathers. I looked at the uh, Velociraptor because I thought this would be a good way of checking. Mm -hmm. And I went down and the Velociraptor entry says, the Jurassic Park scientists oh, took many liberties I see. with the ju so that's right. their way in of, universe exactly that's their way of having the Velociraptor that you want to see because you've seen the movies but making uh, and I appreciated that I appreciate that they are they are clearly are making a go of it accuracy wise I looked up there are loads of really really obscure species so I I, um, I was kind of checking them against Wikipedia as I called them <laughs> right. and whenever there was a fact like oh it's eleven feet long I'd be like. Yep, the checks people, out. It checks out. Um, although we only know that based on two thumb bones or something like that. So, so you're having you're having fun. I'm I'm yeah. having fun, and that's the main thing. <laughs> it's, it's quite good. Um, it's quite bad in a, it as well. It's not amazing. It's, it's it's not got the same charm as Pokemon Go. But in a, in, if you are missing Pokemon Go and you gave up on it, you could probably give it a go and it'll be all right. So that's all I have to say about Jurassic World Alive for now. Okay. Until I create my non-canon hybrids through cruelly darting enough dinosaurs. Nature's cruel mistakes <laughs> cobbled together by Luke, Dr. Exactly. Luke and Stein. Just making dinosaurs mush and together. Just taped one to the other's back. Yep, because if there's one thing we know from Jurassic World, it's that the current dinosaurs aren't good enough. And that Chris Pratt was a lot more charming in Parks and Rec. Uh, but that's enough Jurassic World Alive for now. Andy, I think you've got a quiz for me, is that right? That is right. Let's go and do that now. Whoa! So, Luke. Yes. The Sega Mega Drive collection, or Genesis collection, uh -huh. for our American friends, mm -hmm. is a collection of 53 classic games from the 16-bit era of the Sega Mega Drive. Do you remember it? I remember it fondly. I never had that console. You never had that console? No, but... Uh, you played the games though, maybe? Yeah, I played played the games. A lot of them came out on different consoles. And yeah. also, my friend at school had one. So oh, well, yeah, then maybe you will do well in this quiz. We're going to find out. The first round, Luke, oh, man. Yeah. you'll be delighted to hear, yeah. is a music round. Oh, okay. So... Oh, boy. Okay. Genesis games are yeah. well known for their excellent soundtracks. Mm -hmm. But Luke, yeah. how many of these level one music tracks from Sega Genesis games, can you identify? Not feeling positive. And I want you to tell me the name of the game. Mike's, Mike's ears have pricked up. Okay. His head is turned. Uh, well, this is one I've heard before. I want to say, hey. Funky, but also mostly dancey. He's taking it up. He's taking it up. I want to say Streets of Rage, but I also want to say uh, the other one, Altered Beast. Altered Adam. Beast. What, what is it? What is it? What, are you, you going to make a guess? Uh, Street, Streets of Rage. Which one? There's three in the collection. <sighs> Streets of Rage. Uh, Streets of Rage 
two. Streets of Rage two is correct. Yay! That is Go Straight from Ooh. level one one of Streets of Rage two. Nice on the Sega Genesis. Are you ready for your second? Born ready. I don't recognise it. I'm going to try and make an educated guess. Okay. It really sounds to me like Capcom music, but then, but then it's got a sort of spooky feel. It's not Rice Star, is it? <laughs> it is not Rice Star. Oh, okay. What okay. is it? What is Luke, it? I can tell you, it is the first level of anyone else. No. Golden Axe. It is Golden Axe. Whoa, Mike. Correct. Well Point done, for Mike. Mike. There. <laughs> Point for Mike. <laughs> wow, Mike's back in this thing. <laughs> Your next. All right. Track. Well, this is Sonic, but which Sonic? This is the best bit. Um, okay, well, it did it, did it do? It's not Green Hill Zone. Uh, I think it's Sonic 3. Okay. Is it Sonic, or might be Sonic, is it Sonic 3? I'm afraid, Luke, it is the Emerald Hill Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Oh no! And the final one in this round, mm. Luke. I'm going into my mind palace. Is there a Genesis in there? <laughs> no. <laughs> well. Oh God. Maybe stay out of the mind palace. <laughs> okay, uh, again, I'm going to say I don't recognise it, but I'll try and make an educated guess. Uh, okay, so I think that this is a bad game. Correct. Is that correct? No, it's not correct. <laughs> Who let Mike in here? Oh wait, so it's a game that Mike thinks is bad, but Andy thinks is good. Okay, well, now I'm not sure, because I was going to say uh, Rice Star. I'm saying Rice Star. <laughs> or maybe, None of them are Rice Star. No one's played Rice Star. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know it. I don't know it. Toe Jam and Earl. Oh, okay. Toe no, Jam and Earl, of course. Can we hear the Rice Star theme? Okay, you want to hear Rice Star? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Yes. Speaking of unpopular characters, such yeah. as Rice Star. <laughs> Not every He has long grasping hands. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to play as that character? It's a very attractive quality. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not every character from a Sega Mega Drive game could be Sonic the Hedgehog. That's true. And there were many unpopular characters who fell by the wayside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luke, yeah. I'm going to show you pictures yeah. okay. of six Sega Mega Drive characters. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you a list of names. I want you to tell me yeah. which character name matches the picture I'm showing you. So here are the names. Oh, OK. Vector Man, Alex Kidd, recognise that one, Sketch Turner, Chuck D. Head, Heady, and Kid Chameleon. We're starting with this character. Oh, God. Corey Feldman? Yes, we're starting uh, with Corey Feldman. I mean, this is a kid, but it he's is. no chameleon. <laughs> but is this Alex Kidd? Is this what Alex Kidd looks like? Okay, that's your guess? Yeah, okay. This is your next picture. Oh, Jesus. What, was <laughs> what were people thinking? The state of that. It's horrible. The absolute state of him. I reckon that is Kid Chameleon. I don't know. Okay. I'm really showing a I'm really showing a lack of Genesis knowledge here, aren't I? All right. This is your next character. Yeah. Oh well, that's uh, that's um, Chuck D. Head. Chuck I, D. Head. I think because he he throws his head. Number four. Yeah. Oh, that must be Vector Man, surely. Because okay. it's all he looks like. He looks like what people in the 90s thought technology looked like. <laughs> okay, good. He looks like he's about to advertise me a very early MP3 player. Uh, okay, well that, maybe that's Sketch Turner. It okay. Could be. Oh, no, oh, he's sweet. He's nice, in his little footsie pyjamas. Uh, I sort of recognise this character, but then I've only got Heady left. Doesn't look like a Heady. Hmm. 
Well, you know what? Hey, I've painted myself into a corner. It's going to have to be heady, isn't it? It's going to be heady. Okay. Heady. Yeah. I can tell you <laughs> that you got. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to table this up. <laughs> it shouldn't take long. <laughs> you got three. Oh, three did I? correct. This one is Kid Chameleon. Oh, okay. He can. Uh, he puts on different hats and he turns into different things. This is yeah. Heady from the game Dynamite Heady. Uh, you got Chuck D. Head from Decap Attack. Well done, me. Forgetting that the mummy who throws his head is Chuck D. Head. You got Vector Man. Yeah. And you got Sketch Turner Sketch from the Turner. game Comics Zone. Comics Zone. And this, I'm afraid to say, is Alex Kidd. Oh, that's Alex Kidd. That's Kid. Alex Kidd, because oh. he's got the sideburns, hasn't he? Okay, the final round, yeah. Luke, mm -hmm. is worth more points than all the other rounds combined. More points than I can possibly imagine. Than you could imagine. Yeah, cool. And it Good. is, Luke, a choose your own adventure story. <laughs> yes! Starring. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Woo! Amazing! Nice. Oh my god. I've studied your previous Choose Your Own Adventures and I think I've got the tone. <laughs> I think I've nailed the writing style. Oh well, then we should be in for an extremely immersive uh, <laughs> and deep narrative. Okay. Yeah. Luke. Oh, great. Okay. It is a beautiful day in the Green Hill Zone. The sun is shining. The sky is blue and the landscape is littered with rings ripe for the taking. Mm -hmm. You are Sonic the Hedgehog, a blue hedgehog who is unusually fast for such a normally slow species, and you are just waking up. You have three lives. Nestled snugly in your nest of warm leaves, you yawn and stretch. Do you A, get out of bed ready to face the day, or B, grab a few more minutes of sleep to give you more energy for the trials ahead? Mm. Jump out of bed, I'm Sonic. I'm ready to go, I'm pumped. I don't okay. need to sleep, I'm not Tails. Tails curled up beside me, <laughs> I assume. You spring from the leaves, ready to face another great day in the Green Hill Zone. You put on a pair of red high-top sneakers and nothing else, as hedgehogs do not feel shame at their own nudity, and breakfast well on chili dogs. <laughs> All of a sudden, however, you hear a mechanical clanking coming from nearby. Oh. Looking around for the source of the noise, you spot your close friend, the pig, Porker Lewis. He is being forced squealing into a mechanical shell that resembles a robot wasp by another identical robot insect. No, Porker! Knowing you don't have much time, you have to act fast. Do you A, spin into a ball and roll towards the wasp, or B, jump into the air and attack the wasp from above? I attack the wasp from above because I don't want to tangle with its stinger. Okay. You've got to get Porker out of there. The wasp raises its tail to fire a bolt of energy at you, but you effortlessly leap over it, curl yourself into a tight ball, and let your wicked spines do the rest. You're too slow! The robot wasp shatters into several smoking pieces, and a small bird who had been imprisoned within flies away, turning back to you as if to say, Thank you, Sonic. I will not forget what you did here today. You're too slow, little bird. Running over to Porker Lewis, you were able to extricate him from his mechanical prison. <laughs> As usual, Lewis is milking this misfortune for all the attention he can get, moaning about how his trotters hurt, and asking you if he thinks, <laughs> asking you if you think he could maybe get some money out of this. <laughs> Where there's blame, there's a claim, Porker Lewis. That's not important right now, you shout to the protesting piglet. Who did this to you? Who? Who, I say? Do I slam him up against a yep. wall? Yeah, you slam him up against a wall. <laughs> Suddenly focused, Porker Lewis fixes you with an unwavering stare and utters a single name, Robotnik. Or possibly Eggman if you're in Japan. <laughs> Your mind reels. <laughs> of course, Dr. Ivo... <laughs> Dr. Ivo Robotnik. <laughs> The mad scientist hell-bent on using animals as living batteries to power his insane robotic creations. You'd heard stories, sure, but always from far-off places like the Scrap Brain Zone or the Spring Yard Zone. You never thought the Green Hill Zone, your peaceful little corner of the world, could end up the target of a mind so monstrous. This time I was too slow. It is at this moment that one thought settles in your brain with alarming clarity. Robotnik must be destroyed. <laughs> You know where Robotnik will be, in a way you've always known. The big boss fight area at the end of Green Hill Zone, near the place that does the chili dogs. <laughs> All that remains is to decide how to get there. Okay. Do you A, run there as fast as possible and do loop the loops? Or B, take the longer route, freeing as many animals and grabbing as many collectibles and bonuses as you can on the way? Collectibles and bonuses? Quick route. Loop the loops. <laughs> That's the thing. We'll free them later. Streaking across the green hill zone like a bolt of blue lightning, you have never felt more alive. The wind whistles through your quills and you find yourself laughing out loud at the sheer exhilaration of going fast. 
Up ahead, a loop the loop seems to bar the way. Not a problem for Sonic the Hedgehog, you think, and defying gravity, barely miss a step. Other thoughts seem to fall away. Porker Lewis, Dr. Robotnik, <laughs> they all fade into insignificance compared to the white hot electric high that is speed. Speed is your god now, and you live only in service of the incredible rush that is going faster and faster and faster. You have become addicted to speed and run until your body is exhausted. Lo lose one life. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic went too fast. Gathering your wits, you arrive at the Green Hill Zone's boss fight area to find Dr. Robotnik himself. Completely bald and with a preposterous moustache, he strikes a ridiculous figure as he works on a small personal aircraft with a wrench. <laughs> there is nothing ridiculous about the aircraft itself, however, oh, as man. he climbs into it and rises slowly off the ground, revealing a fearsome-looking ball and chain contraption slung underneath. His eyes meet yours, and in that instant you know that only one of you is leaving here alive. Me! With a guttural shriek, Robotnik flings the flying machine into gear and accelerates towards you. You have only moments to decide what to do. Do you A, hit him three times, <laughs> B, hit him five times, or C, <laughs> hit him eight times? I hit him five times. You have not hit Dr. Robotnik enough times. <laughs> Smiling, he realises your mistake and snarls, looks like you'll soon be Sonic the Dead Hog. <laughs> Oh no, that's terrible! Your last thought as the wrecking ball crushes you is how embarrassing it is to be killed by someone with lines this bad. If you still have a life left, proceed to see. You have hit Dr. Robotnik the correct amount of times. Yay! That always annoyed me in Sonic, it's not three. It's eight. Eight? Eight. Is it, was it really eight? Eight. Eight hits. Who has the time? <laughs> On the final hit, a series of small explosions rock his vehicle and flames consume the cockpit. Who ordered the boiled egg, you think to yourself, before remembering you're not in Japan and therefore this doesn't work. <laughs> Regardless, Robotnik is dead and the animals are free. Wait, he burned alive? Yes, he's Can dead. Can I like, drag him out? No, he's dead. Give him a talking to? No, he to. died. He burned to death. You receive 100 points on the key to the city and, I don't know, a lifetime supply of chili dogs or something. Congratulations! Yay! Woo! You have completed the Sonic the Hedgehog Choose Your Own Adventure quiz. Oh, you're welcome, Porker Lewis. And I did it all without tails. <laughs> Lousy mooching tails. For a minute I experienced the visceral thrill of being Sonic the Hedgehog. And now I have to go back to my regular body. Yeah, slow. Let's go back to regular life. Slow, gangly, not radical or tubular. Unable to run up a loop the loop. Just have to carry on as best we can, I suppose. Well, let's carry on as best we can <laughs> into what you guys have been saying in the comments. Last week I finally finished the epic God of War, and listed seven things that, now Kratos' new adventure is over, we need to see in a sequel game. We're not fussy about where the story goes next because all mythologies are fascinating, but Ancient Egyptian would perhaps be our first pick because A, just imagine the fight Kratos would have with this crocodile god, and B, Atreus already looks adorable in a pharaoh hat. <laughs> LC Kaboom has one extra item for your feature, Luke. Eight, Luke and Ellen as the new blacksmiths. Just imagine Kratos in cat armor. Oh, I could have little ears. It doesn't sound very intimidating. Yeah, that's exactly the point, Andy. Get them to lower their guard and then pow, axe in the face. Hard to argue with that. Elsewhere, the channel fired off some of the worst, brattiest, snot-nosed little oiks ever to grace the video game world in this feature about kids who made us glad we never have to babysit again. You bump into Loki, who unfortunately isn't the Marvel Cinematic Universe Loki we all love to hate, but a small annoying child we just regular hate, with a bad British accent. Stay out of my way or I'll make sure you never get in it again. Yeah, my British ears! No! Oh my! And again, you chimed in with extra suggestions, and by you, we mean you, Max Littlewood, because you said, you forgot the worst of them all, real children who play multiplayer games. I don't get it. Oh, you know, it's that thing where people scream and say horrible stuff in online multiplayer games. People don't do that, do they? Listen in on my Overwatch game. Let's move on, shall we? They don't even know me, man. Moving on. In that same video about irritating children, it turned out you're prone to a little anger yourself, Luke. It's fun most days, the hard work. Yeah, well, so is running a YouTube channel, Mila, but you don't hear me complaining. I mean, except about the catering. Your Skittles, Mr. Westaway. Is this a f***ing joke? I said sour Skittles! Enraged Chinchilla was a little taken aback, saying, Bloody hell, Luke is really serious about his Skittles. Talk about taste the rage bow. God of War wishlist item 9, Atreus to shout, taste the rage bow whenever he fires an arrow. Nice! And finally, last week's show at the weekend saw Mike stand in for a Han Solo themed quiz that included an unusual smuggling request from one of the galaxy's most feared gangsters. Mike Mabuki, 
Junto en ti, Slompatica me chisa crispa. O chora chisa la ta fifty choya. <laughs> Commenter Kerry Noir was impressed with that reading, Andy, saying, Mike the Heart is the best thing. Oh, yeah, sure, he seems great until you lose his shipment of Watsits and suddenly he's out for your kneecaps. Andy Maboki, for empty party combo, shoot a cheeser. I'd better go talk to him. Ow, my kneecaps! Ah, uh, you don't notice your kneecaps, do you, until they've been smashed in by a Hutties gangster? Yeah, you're probably not going to be able to stand up now. Oh, oh, God. It's getting a little too real here on the sofa. Let's move on to nicer matters. Andy, check out this art. All right. Do you remember uh, when Jane was on the sofa a few weeks ago? Um, she was talking about how you all live in a filing cabinet. It's impossible to guess what our wonderful viewers are going to just really latch pick up on and latch there. onto in each episode, yeah. which is what makes me so happy. And look, in this case, it's Flojo A is drawn. Look, there's Jane. Yeah, she's just peeking her out. Head out. Well, it's just Jane. So sneaky. Like, this one. The, way, <laughs> yeah. the way none of the rest of us are in it and Jane is looking out of that drawer makes me think she's <laughs> murdered us all and she's seeing if there are any no. witnesses. It's just because you guys are still asleep. Ah. But check out sleep forever. Check out this option. See Simon R's alternative ah, then. Ah, there we See, are. See, there you all are. We still are alive. Out. Uh, Jane's obviously still on the top bunk, sure. I guess, sure. as, as it were. And look, there's me and Ellen on the top. We're, we're chilling out on the yeah, sofa. Yeah, just hanging out on the sofa on top of the filing cabinet. It's nice. cool, isn't it? Nice drawing. I like it. And well, it wouldn't be Art Corner without a little bit of Dungeons and Dragons. So indeed, look at what Tiru has done. Oh, wow, no, I really like these. They these remind amazing. They look like sort of medieval woodcuts that have been colorized yeah. or something. I really like the uh, arrows mm -hmm. that Meryl Wen's holding. For yeah. some reason, that sort of makes it look like it's on a tapestry, like on the Bayer tapestry or yeah. something like that. But a better ta Bayer tapestry, because if you've seen the Bayer tapestry, you'll know it's, it's actually not, not very good. It's not all that. And this, this is amazing. Thank you very much, guys, for your artwork. We love looking at it, as always. Uh, do keep it coming, because it makes us so happy. So we've come to the end of show of the weekend. Mm. Here yes. we are. Here we are. Spinning the little Sonic and Robotnik head sign like he does at the end of the game. Yeah, that's what's happening. Only yep. it's Luke and my faces. I mean, what's happening right now is that thing you can do in Sonic where you can like keep it up in the air for just a little while longer. Yeah, yeah. keep it going. So, so you don't have to say goodbye just yet. I didn't even reach the end. I'm, I'm in the Chaos Emerald zone. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm doing oh. that. I'm doing loops. Oh, man. I'm so, so slow. That, so yeah. bad at Sonic. Uh, but thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Uh, there is not going to be Show of the Weekend next week or the week after because we are going to E... Three. That's right. Three E's, people. Count them. The enormous egg exhibition. <laughs> That's can't it. Wait. I'm We're gonna eat that egg. The we biggest make huge eggs. Huge omelets. Ostrich eggs. Mm. Rhino eggs. The all best. the biggest eggs from wait. around the world. All going to be made into omelets and eaten by us. Uh, yeah, and if we've got time, we'll play a whole bunch of games as if well. If we've got time, we'll also swing by the Electronic Entertainment Expo, which if is happening time. next door. There won't be time. There'll be video time. games there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is the I'll event... Be full of egg and sleepy. <laughs> Your default state. Yeah. <laughs> is the event around which the entire gaming world uh, revolves. It yeah. is the sun in the solar system of the, of the games industry. The games industry is the moon. That's right. And it orbits it. it is, and we'll be there yeah. bringing you the hottest exclusives, Everything. the hands-on impressions, and yep. the gameplay, the hot, fresh, piping gameplay. It's just too hot to hold. Almost too it's hot too to hot hot to handle. It's burning my hands. Gotta put I, it on the internet. I can't let go. You can't have your hands on it. It's burnt. Just, it's just too hot. So, we'll uh, so yeah, that. we're going to be there doing that, which means that we won't be here on the sofa. But we will be back in a couple of weeks. And in the meantime, there's going to be so much video on the channel from E3. You are not yeah. going to miss us. You'll and be the sofa wishing. will be here. Yeah. Don't worry about the sofa. Oh, yeah, yeah. The I sofa mean, will, I mean, it will just be here assuming, in this room. Assuming we lock up carefully. The sofa's not going Well, yeah, that's true. Mm. But the sofa's not going anywhere. So I don't know what you're worried about. Unless it comes to life when yeah. I'm not here, like in Toy Story. I feel weird about sitting on it now.